I see we already starting the beginning of the year off with a bang. You think you know? You have no idea. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Before I begin, I wanna say happy new year. I know that 2022 could have been a rough year for some of us, for most of us, but it's the beginning of the new year, 2023. Make this year your best one yet. You have no other choice. Like I said in the beginning, we already starting this year off with a bang. And that's thanks to Rolling Stone, because if you didn't know, yesterday, on the first, the first of the year, they released their 200 greatest singers of all time. And most of y'all that's into music and everything, y'all know that Rolling Stone is infamous and they're like acclaimed for like their lists, their all time lists, like the greatest albums of all time, the greatest male singers of all time, the greatest rock stars of all time, the greatest this of all time, right? And recently, released their updated 2022 list you know at the end of 2022 over the last uh, you know 100 so years their updated list of the greatest singers of all time top 200 their top 200 singers of all time not of the 90s not of the 2000s of all time like think about that time span all time right so, if I'm not mistaken, I think their last list was like in 2008, which is like 14, 15 years ago. So, this is their updated list 15 years later, right? So, a lot of people are like, okay, let's see. You know, it was a big thing. It was trending on Twitter and everybody was like, oh, let's see. And a major thing was seeing where your favorite artist place, or even if they're not your favorite artist, where certain artists place, you know, certain iconic legendary artists mixed with the newer generation of artists. Like, what was the ranking? And let's be honest, before we even start, we don't really know, like, who's really behind these rankings. And it's like, how serious do y'all even take Rolling Stone? Because I feel like over the years, Rolling Stone, in some cases, to some people, from some perspectives, they have lost credibility because it's like, some choices, like, I'm going to discuss it. Some of the choices, some of the rankings were surprising and interesting, to say the least, Right? But let's get into it. And y'all already know. <laughs> I was wondering, like, okay, let me see if I leave made this list. Because if I remember the 2008 one, she didn't make the list at all. And it was like the top 200, top 100. She didn't make the list at all. So I was just like, okay, let me see what she's going to rank. And in my mind, because it's Rolling Stone, I'm thinking she's going to rank like 100 something maybe you know what I'm saying like in that range because it's Rolling Stone not because that's what I think right it's because it's Rolling Stone and with Aaliyah and Rolling Stone it's like this they don't have like the best you know connection together like Aaliyah and BET or Aaliyah and MTV or like Aaliyah and Complex or certain publications and media outlets that really like big up Aaliyah Rolling Stone wasn't really one of them I mean when Aaliyah first passed they didn't even give her a commemorative magazine cover. They didn't really give her nothing, you know. It was years after Aliyah's death where they started really, you know, publicizing her and like praising her and everything like that. So I'm like, okay, let's see where they ranked Aliyah. And to my surprise, and a lot of people sent me this, just as surprised as me, they ranked Aaliyah, top 200 of all time, the greatest singers. They ranked her at number 40. These discussions over the last, what, this year going to make four years. I had this channel, right? Over the last four years, over the last few years, we have these discussions about Aaliyah and her singing ability, her vocal ability, and everything like that. Compared to like her peers and everybody else around that time. And, oh, okay, how great of a singer was she? How great of a vocalist was she? Rolling Stone, this well-publicized media outlet, you know, that panel full of critics, whoever chose this ranking, they placed Aaliyah at number 40 out of 200. Now, this created a thunderstorm, firestorm, blizzard, tsunami, of different comments and different reactions, different perspectives, like what? Oh, uh, oh. You know, a lot of people was like, 
Hold up, hold up, hold up, wait. Oh my God, hold up. Zero. Why all of these trash? I'm not gonna lie, because it's Rolling Stone, even I was like, hmm? Wait a minute. Hmm, interesting. But let's take a look at what Rolling Stone had to say. The 200 greatest singers of all time. And it says from Sinatra to SZA, from R&B to Salsa to Alt Rock. And it came out on January 1st, 2023. This is the graphic they use. Now let's see where they placed Aaliyah. We already talked about it. But to many, it was an interesting and surprising choice. So let's just go. Number 45, Ella Fitzgerald. Number 44, James Brown. 43, Ariana Grande. 41, Etta James. Now we get to number 40, Aaliyah. And here's what they had to say. Maybe the most remarkable thing about Aaliyah's voice, besides its flexibility and crisp range, was its preternatural poise. She always seemed to be holding her power in reserve to know every side of the scenarios she described. Yet, that vocal restraint didn't spell a limited emotional palette. Far from it. Aaliyah's careful phrasing emitted heat when the song was sensuous and her musical intelligence is always right on the surface. We'll never get to find out just how much deeper and richer she could have gotten with age. She passed away tragically at 22 in 2001. But the mark she made on R&B and pop during the 90s remains permanent. Number 40, Aaliyah. Do y'all agree with that? What they had to say? If you have to, go back to it, look at that ranking, look at the other rankings, and just really think about it. Rolling Stone, you know, this is a publication, like I said, they've always kind of like shunned Aaliyah, like as many different times when like, which I feel like with Aaliyah's case, with Aaliyah's legacy, this is an updated list, right? And they had no choice after 21 years. You see her impact, her legacy, her influence, her inspiration, how she basically was a blueprint for R&B that's out today, R&B that's popular today. There's no way she could have not made the list. Now, how high she was gonna place, you see what they did, you see what they placed her, but that's making so many different reactions where some people are like, what, Aaliyah, number 40? What? How'd she get that high? How'd she get above this one? How'd she get above that one? Oh my God. I have some people saying, oh, Aaliyah should have been higher. And then, People like me, well, I feel like, considering... Was that the dog from Come Back In One Piece? <laughs> Yo, you can go with the dog. have people like me where I'm like in the middle. I'm like, considering the plethora of singers that was on this top 200, I feel like Aliyah was well-placed. Like, really? I'm surprised they even placed it that high, but considering what they said, I'm I'm in agreement with them. And here's another thing, but I feel like people take certain lists and they think about it too critically. And I know y'all like, what you mean? People think about the list in the term singer too specifically. You know what I mean? Like even when you think of like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which Hopefully, Aaliyah gets in pretty soon, right? People think Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, like, oh, Rock and Roll, like, they had to be a big Rock and Roll artist, a rock star to be in that. It was like, no, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is just like, Rock and Roll starts from black music. Black music, there's a many different black artists that deserve to be in that, that met the criteria, that still meet the criteria, that still inspiring millions, including many other artists that's coming up after them that's becoming popular and successful. They left blueprints. And then you think about Aaliyah's case, her seven year career, starting when she was basically 14, ending when she was 22. And you think about what she did in that time span. And you just think about what she could have been doing in the last 21 years. And it's, I know a lot of people say they use Aaliyah's death as like a scapegoat. Or Aaliyah's death carried her this far. Her death is a topic of discussion. It's a big discussion. It's a controversy with that. But at the end of the day, her music, her legacy, her influence, 
her fashion, different things like that. That's still being discussed. That's still being, she's discussed, if not the same, if not more, than most artists that's out today. Like her name is in those same conversations. So it's like, these are things that Rolling Stone, I feel like they looked at and they just could not ignore it. Especially with the release of her music in 2021 and the big hysteria that that caused and how all her streams just immediately went up and like many of her songs are almost at 100 million on Spotify. Her overall streams been past 1 billion on streaming services. Things like that, they just could not ignore. I also wanted to add that looking at what Rolling Stone had to say, you could tell that they knew Aaliyah had more singing ability than what she displayed in most of her songs. You even have artists now trying to keep up with what Aaliyah did over 20 years ago, like... <laughs> and going back to what I said in the beginning, where I feel like people take the term too literal of like singer, where you know, you know, in the black community, they have that thing where it's like a singer, then a singer, like a singer with an A. And I talked about this many times, like those dramatic singers. I feel like that's the perfect term for it, dramatic singers. Not to say that there's something wrong, but in a negative connotation. It's just you use your vocals for the dramatics, you know, showing your range, the runs, the riffs, the uh, 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 all that, right? And, you know, the belting, the power, everything all together. Using your voice in that way. Where you had Aaliyah in the midst of all of these, ah, ah, all of that, and she was more ah, ah, that type. But compared with the beats that were made for her, the music, as music changed, as music evolved, Aaliyah did show her range here and there. If you really listen to her albums, you listen and you look at some of her performances. Where, you know, people would criticize her live performances too. Where it's like, oh my God, she sounds horrible because she was singing deep. But it's like, you think about it, that's range. She could sing in that softer voice, but then she could sing in that deeper voice. And then even some of her songs, the studio recordings, you could hear that range, you know? But people think singer, they want to be like, oh my God, like, how did Aaliyah play so high above this one and that one? And here's the thing with that. I don't think that they placed Aaliyah too high. I just think that they placed other artists too low. Oh. That's my take on it. What do y'all think? Because, you know, they had artists like Patti LaBelle at number 80 this. They had uh, Brandy at 130 this. And they even placed Michael Jackson at number 86. Now, you done pissed me off. And from my knowledge... The older list had Michael Jackson at least in the top 20. And if you look at Michael Jackson's description, it says, knowing what we know now, it might be hard to listen to his music, something of that sort, right? So that goes to show that when they compiled this list, it wasn't just about singing ability. Singers. Of course, it's the greatest singers of all time, but it's more of like singing ability, but the impact of that singing ability, the impact of that vocal ability the impact of the vocal choices that were made. Look at Aliyah's description and what they said about her. It's the impact of those vocal choices. That's what says of all time. Now you have other artists currently today that's inspiring to be like Aliyah, inspiring to sing like Aliyah, inspiring to have that sound of Aliyah, you know? And if y'all hear a lot of police sirens and everything in the back, y'all know it's people still celebrating New Year's. Y'all know how they do in New York City. You know, they celebrating Aliyah being number 40. <laughs> you know, so bear with me. And I'm just excited that Rolling Stone decided to place Aliyah at number 40 and to start discussion because, of course, because of this, Aliyah was trending along with many other artists that people felt were like too low, too high, or whatever the case may be. But it started this discussion of Aliyah's vocal ability. And more, not more so her vocal ability, but her vocal choices. And how those impact the vocal choices you hear today. Because you think about it, like even when people would do covers of Aliyah's songs, 
they tend to oversing it because Aaliyah left that room for interpretation. She left that room for you to go anywhere with the song. She chose to stay in a certain range. Like I said, she would show it here and there, but in most of her songs, she chose to stay in a certain range, right? And she had like most of her songs, uh, oh, her most popular songs had like that talk singing type of formula. But then if you really listen to them, there's many songs where she would ad lib and riff and run and go low and go high and falsetto. But, you know, as I said, if you're not doing Wendy Houston, Mariah Carey type vocal, people want to look at you like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when it comes to vocal ability, they don't really consider you. They don't really pay attention to you. Look at her vocal choices and look at the vocal choices you hear today. It's the impact of it all. Now, you want to speak about it technically and, you know, talent-wise, that's still talent. That's still technicality in her choices because you think about it, the soft singing, the falsetto singing, and even the way Aaliyah used to, like, sing on certain beats that Timberland would make or certain beats that Missy would help me. Certain songs, a lot of people can't sing like that. You ever hear certain covers? Like I said before, certain covers of Aaliyah songs, people tend to oversing it and it doesn't sound right. Sometimes it's like, oh, okay, it's nice. But the way Aaliyah sung it was unique to where it's like, you instantly hear certain songs, you be like, oh, this reminds me of a song Aaliyah was singing. You know? Just the same way like how Michael Jackson had a unique way of singing and his ad-libs, where you hear certain beats or you hear like certain artists, you'd be like, hmm, that sounds like a song Michael Jackson could have sung. You know, even with the different ranges that Michael Jackson sung with, the different genres he sung with, he experimented with, they each had a unique way of singing, unique stylistic choices. And then you had the artists like Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, and Mariah Carey, they all place in the top 10. Because like I said, those are like those pinnacle voices that people always think of like when it comes to like the powerful, dramatic singing. And you hear those are the influences, those are the inspirations that people always, oh, I wanna sing like Whitney Houston, I wanna sing Mariah Carey. You listen to these songs or covers of American Idol, or people auditioning for a song or a talent show. They sing Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey. But then you listen to the soft R&B, the alternative R&B, when it comes to samples. Aaliyah is always in that conversation too. Many times Aaliyah gets sampled. Many times you hear a song reminiscent of Aaliyah that's softer singing, the falsetto singing. You know, a lot of people like to call it whisper singing, but to me it's like softer singing that fits the mood of the song. Like I said before, what cause would it have been, what need would it have been for Aaliyah to use a six octave range on a song like Try Again? Could somebody please make it make sense? And it's, it's about time that Aaliyah gets the respect she deserves, especially from media outlets and publications like Rolling Stone, who for so many years have kind of like shunned Aaliyah or they kind of like placed her low or they mentioned her here and there when it comes to the 90s, they mentioned her, blah, blah, blah. but number 40 out of 200. And I'm not, to be honest, like a lot of the artists they had under Aaliyah, I was like, wow. They placed Aaliyah in the top 50 out of the greatest singers, top 200 singers of all time. And I feel like this is a testament and if people, you know, the fans, we get it. The big Aaliyah fans, we get it. It's not just because we're blinded by being a fan. It's just like, we've been trying to tell y'all for so long. Now it takes Rolling Stone for people to be like, hmm. And some people still not gonna get it because they so wrapped in the, the soft singing Aaliyah used to do compared to other singers that did the, but to me, it's not about the singing ability. More so the singing ability, the vocal choices, and how that influence the music of today. People don't think about it like that. People just think about, you know, the technicalities of it and like, oh, how sharp or flat or this or that she was in the performance or, you know, how much range she showed. 
and all of her music, and not to mention, it was only seven years. She started at 14, ended at 22. She had so much more to do over these last 21 years. We don't know what she could have been doing, but with what she left us in those seven years of her career, you see that influence today. She left that blueprint all that long time ago. You know, you see the construction sites everywhere now. You get it? You get what I'm saying? So I agree with Rolling Stone's choice. And this is just a testament to show that, you know, being a great singer doesn't always mean dramatics and runs and riffs every 10 seconds of the song. It's using your voice in a powerful way. That doesn't always mean belting and volume and how those vocal choices reflects years later and this is when I said you know in 2008 there wasn't really like you know a thing where people could be like oh I can hear Aaliyah and this artist I can hear Aaliyah and that artist you know but 21 years later Rolling Stone had no choice but to acknowledge Aaliyah which is why they placed her at number 40 out of 200 greatest singers of all time. Do you think she should have been lower? Do you think she should have been higher? What is your opinion on Rolling Stone ranking Aaliyah number 40 out of their 200 greatest singers of all time? I mean, even Aaliyah's like, what? Y'all still don't believe in me? Number 40? Y'all still don't believe in me? Like, what did I do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but like I said, if you really look at what they said, it's more based on like the influence of her vocal choices than like the technicalities of it. And that's it. And I cannot wait to see what y'all think about this. You know, we starting the year off with a bang, like I said. I'm excited to see what else comes for Ali this year. And I wanna know, do y'all believe in Rolling Stone? Do y'all care about what Rolling Stone has to say? Do y'all take Rolling Stone seriously? And what do you think about the other working choices? Because like I said, I agree with Aaliyah's ranking, but there was other artists where I'm like, why are they rank so low? Like, certain artists, they had like some new artists at like 60 something, and they had like the legendary artists at like 100 or something. I'm like, uh 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 uh. uh. Wait a minute, hold up! Some interesting choices, including Aaliyah's, but I agree with that one. What do y'all think? Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.